Hi, this is Lauren Reyes, and I'm going to talk to you about our lungs and their function. And I apologize, I'm at my parents' house, and they have not, they need to uh, change their um, fire alarm battery, so it's going to be beeping the whole time, so I apologize about that. Um, these are an example of our lungs. Um, this is the diaphragm, so as we inspire uh, or inhale, our diaphragm flattens, but the lungs expand. So the diaphragm flattens to make room for the lungs. It's an autonomic um, nervous system response. It is to contract the muscles around the lungs and to it, to get it to open up and the diaphragm flattens so that it creates room for the lungs to reach full expansion um, to get all that air into it. So air is oxygen rich. It has a lot of different gases in it, but it is mostly ox it is uh, high in oxygen, which is what our body requires to function. Everything requires oxygen. Um, so uh, the air is inhaled through our mouth or our, or our um, nose, down our trachea, into our lungs bronchi, into the bronchioles, into the little alveoli sacs where gas exchange occurs. So the alveoli are wrapped in capillaries um, where oxygen diffuses into them and um, then it circulates through our entire body, through our um, arteries. And then exhaling, so if I then the lungs are going to um, uh, deflate isn't probably not the right word, but um, not be as expansive, not. Uh, and then so this, when we're expiring, we are actually pushing out carbon dioxide rich air, um, which is occurring, which we get the carbon dioxide at the same exact time that the capillaries take the oxygen, they pass carbon dioxide, which goes through the alveoli, through the bronchioles, through the bronchi, through the trachea, through the mouth, through the nose. Um, so out, so in and out, in and out. Um, and uh, so different lung capacities is mainly relative to body size. Um, a huge person uh, who's just naturally a bigger person is going to have a, a tidal volume or a total lung capacity size much bigger naturally than a teeny tiny little person, um, like, a, like a child or even just a small adult. Um, but they can still, a person, it depends on health also and exercise um, of the lungs that can create a better um, total volume, uh, a better, a bigger total volume, a, a bigger capacity. Um, because endurance, the more you work out, you build up endurance, your body is able to um, push, push the limits and, and expand. Um, so the tidal volume is the amount of air, the amount of gas that one holds just just kind of like on average in their lungs with each breath. Um, and then, so asthma. Asthma is triggered by dust, dirt, pollen, perfume, chemicals, um, anything that can get into your um, respiratory tract and become irritating to it. So when it becomes irritated, it, in, it um, gets inflamed, inflamed and it gets swollen. And when things get swollen, they get swollen inward and the lumen becomes so much smaller. And so you get symptoms of dyspnea, of um, wheezing. So when, some, when an airway, the smaller the airway is passing through, the more sound it's going to produce. Um, so that's where we get that uh, typical symptom of wheezing. Um, there can even be chest tightness. Um, so the, and then you have goblet cells all along your respiratory tract. So those produce mucus. So then mucus is also triggered. So you have a small airway, a small lumen, uh, plus mucus. So there is very difficult to breathe and you need a bronchodilator um, ASAP. Uh, so the priorities for a nurse are airway, opening up that respiratory tract. Um, the nurse will do a super quick respiratory assessment um, to, to see the breath sounds, to, to know what she's working with, um, it, especially if it's, a situation where this is a person who didn't know they had asthma until this incident, then um, then knowing what you're dealing with is going to be much different than someone coming in and saying, I forgot my inhaler, you know, two hours away and I need something. They're going to know. They're going to have a lot more information for you to uh, respond quicker than someone who doesn't. Um, so quick quick respiratory breath sounds, um, you quick vitals, and then uh, you need to get them a respiratory therapist ASAP. They need a, a bronchodilator treatment um, with a nebulizer or inhaler, whatever the facility can get their hands on, um, whatever the uh, physician orders immediately. 
And um, so you can do breathing treatments with your inhaler, um, which is usually like the, the um, long-term, uh, just daily routine also can be for short acting um, emergency situations. Um, or nebulizers is usually what's going to be uh, used with a respiratory therapist. Um, there's lots of different bronchodilators. There's uh, dozens. Um, so it just depends. It's patient by patient on what works for them, what kind of symptoms they're exhibiting. Um, uh, just expectations of the patient is kind of how they are treated with what bronchodilator they need. So there's short acting, there's fast acting. The short acting is what you would need in an emergency situation. Um, those are beta-2 adder adrenergic agonists. Um, there's anticholinergics. There's corticosteroids. Um, there's leukotriene modifiers and there's immunomodulators. Um, and so patients' education with as an asthma attack is serious. Um, they will have to be consulted by a pulmonologist, a physician, a respiratory therapist, someone who has a lot of information for them to give them that diagnosis. Um, and then they come up with what is called an asthma action plan. So this is something that the person, the patient should know through and through based on their, you know, obviously their age. If it's a child, then their parents should know through and through. They should know exactly what to do. Um, they will have this chart and there's green, yellow, red. Red is emergency. Green is just kind of daily stuff, um, depending on how you should be treating your and what you should be doing. Um, seeking help or just using your long acting daily uh, inhaler. Um, so a nurse needs to talk to their patient about triggers. You know, if they're really unsure what triggered them, maybe keeping a diary of like, when I'm around my grandma, oh my goodness, she smokes. Yep, that's a trigger. Um, I always get a, a, you know, I always get short of breath in my grandma's house. Well, does she smoke? No, does she wear a lot of perfume? Yes, okay. Just like so that they understand what to stay away from or to um, to be prepared for. Like if they're into sports, exercise is totally okay. They just need to always have their inhaler on them. They need to not push, them, push themselves too much. Um, their coach needs to be aware of their asthma. Um, so just modifying your, your life, um, to your asthma for sure. Um, cold air is going to be a, a constrictor. So that's going, it's cold air is dry. So it's going, it has no humidity in it. So it is going to irritate and swell and possibly create an asthma attack. So you need to be prepared if you're going to be living in cold weather, um, or going someplace with cold weather. Uh, so this is really important because you need to make sure that these people understand what to do so that when they're discharged they're going home safely um and then uh so uh, as i said exercise is really good it actually strengthens their body it increases their total and capacity it can be a great benefit if you know your parameters and you're always prepared with your inhaler it should always be on person always if you have asthma always 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 you should never be without your inhaler um and uh, resources, there's there's an abundance online. Um, there's communities you can join, um, you know, like through social media of, of asthma communities. There's pl a plethora of downloadable booklets with literature on it. Um, the American Lung Association, there's Allergy and Asthma Network. And then here in Arizona, there's Arizona Asthma and Allergy Institute, um, where you can find tons of uh, physicians that are really, really well um, knowledgeable about this and be able to treat you. And if you're looking for a different type of treatment, there's a lot of information out there. Um, so thank you. Thank you. There you go. <laughs>